Good morning, everyone. Welcome on the second day of the World Soundtrack Awards uh, Film Music Days. Um, and we're going to discuss f um, music in nature documentaries. It might be strange to think that a movie about real life things even needs music, but re because real life doesn't have music as well. But the music in a documentary is used in the same way as the music that is used in regular films, in fiction films. And that's what we're going to discuss now. Um, on my left side, Nanita Desai, she wrote the music for uh, Untamed uh, Romania, and currently she's working on a new Netflix wildlife series for, uh, yeah, for Netflix, of course. <laughs> then we have uh, Dirk Brossé, um, he wrote the music for Onze Natuur, a Belgian documentary, it's called Our Nature. And then we have uh, Bruno Coulet, who wrote the music for um, Microcosmos, but also Genesis and lots of other uh, things. Um, just uh, so to make things clear, uh, Bruno will uh, answer my questions in French, but uh, myself and maybe Dirk will try to translate it in English for you. Um, let me start with Bruno, because uh, I think you are a, a pioneer when it comes to um, nature documentaries in Europe. It's certainly a personal thing for me because it's the first nature documentary that I remember that I saw as a child, Microcosmos. Uh, what was it like for you when they asked you to make music for a nature documentary? I was very surprised because, no, I, I'm going to, to speak in French. Uh, we have a fantastic conductor and a fantastic translator. So, j'étais très surpris parce que. Je suis pas, je suis pas un homme de nature. J'aime la ville, j'aime le béton, j'aime euh, donc la nature, c'est une chose euh, excepté, excepté les bords de plage ou la montagne. Donc ça m'a surpris, mais dès que j'ai vu les premières images de Microcosmos, j'ai vu que c'était pas un, seulement un film de nature, c'était un film fantastique et que la musique y aurait une place euh, fondamentale. So Bruno was very surprised that he got a question for this kind of uh, film because he's not a nature guy, he's a city guy, he loves the city, uh, he loves buildings. And uh, when he saw the first footage of Microcosmos, he was so stunned by the images that he thought, I, I have to do this. Et étonné que, euh, finalement, par le film, euh, de, de penser que le, les voyages lointains ne sont pas les plus extraordinaires et qu'il suffit de se pencher comme ça, euh, dans un champ pour découvrir tout un monde d'insectes, un monde euh, absolument extraordinaire. Maybe we should just watch one clip, just so everyone has an impression of it, uh, what's your music and also what the images of Microcosmos are like. We just saw the, sorry. It's the metamorphosis, uh, la metamorphose d'un gros moustique on dit le cousin, et en fait j'ai écrit un, un simple accord, mais qui passe euh, en relais euh, sur chaque pupitre de l'orchestre, des bois, des cuivres, des cordes, et il y a aussi une métamorphose de, de voix, euh, mon propre fils qui malheureusement a mué depuis, mais lui aussi, mais euh, chante une note et qui est prise en relais par une mezzo-soprane, donc je crois que, euh, je ne suis pas sûr que le public... Euh, qui n'est pas musicien se rend compte de ça, mais il sent quand même qu'il y a dans la musique quelque chose qui se transforme, qui se métamorphose. So we just saw the metamorphosis of a, a mosquito, and uh, Bruno chose to uh, use every piece of the orchestra in a. He, he wrote a, some kind of chords for every uh, single piece of the orchestra to. Um, it, it's, it's it's the same uh, the same chord, but the chord is. Uh, going to the, the strings, the woodwinds. We'll dig in you, into your uh, work of progress uh, later on. We have a, a special clip where we can see how you conduct and how you okay. write music for, uh, for the orchestra. Um, I wanted to ask Dirk, um, because we have a clip from you as well, um, where we see the birth of uh, little creatures. Um, how did you uh, choose the musical um, uh, features to use? Um, I started writing uh, this music when they were still filming, so I didn't see any footage when I was writing, which is very difficult, which is the other way around. And uh, I was working uh, with the initial director, and he gave me some, some uh, keywords uh, that are all the same with all animals. It's the struggle to survive, 
It's um, finding food for the youngsters and um, uh, procreation. Uh, so he, they give me some 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 keyboards. And he told me, please don't don't go in the direction of uh, of Walt Disney. I want completely something something different because uh, the danger is that uh, we as human beings, when okay, this is of course the metamorphosis is really nice, but if one animal is killing the other, we with our human feelings we go like, oh, he's the the good one and the bad one. But in the nature, there is no good one and bad one because. You have to kill in order to, <laughs> to, to survive. And I think what Walt Disney did, uh, and, and I think Bambi is a great, uh, a great uh, example when uh, um, the next animal in the chain is killing Bambi. We say, oh, the bastard, uh, the beautiful Bambi died. Because again, I mean, if he doesn't kill, then his, his, his youngsters have no, no, uh, uh, no food. So um, the initial director told me, please stay away as far as you can from, uh, from Walt Disney. But then the uh, original director was fired after I had written a lot of music uh, because it started as a TV series uh, that will be on TV uh, from uh, next January onwards. So it's uh, seven episodes. Uh, every episode has between th 35, and 35 and 40 minutes of music, so it's three hours and a half. So I already did a lot of work. And then all of a sudden there were two new directors. They say, "Hey, we love Walt Disney, and uh, maybe we should add some some hu human flavor." And uh, and then on top of that, they decided to um, uh, 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 from the from the best bits of the seven episodes to make a film, which is now in the in the in the theaters. So so. I, I was really confused, and in the meantime, I got uh, all all the, all the footage bit by bit. But then we had to to to, to do the recording of the music w while they were still filming. So it was uh, at the end. I said I, I will do my own thing, and basically what I did. Uh, it's impossible to uh, uh, in such a short period of time. Although I had time, but still, write four hours of music. It's it's, it's a lot. It's almost impossible. So I said everything that is um, that is uh, that we can see as humans with with our eyes. Everything that we can, the birds in the the birds in the sky and the animals that are just walking on the planet as we do. There, I will I will use acoustic music uh, played by the orchestra, but. Everything we don't see, if we walk in the forest and we see a, a, a fallen tree, we have no idea what's happening under under the tree. So uh, all the things we don't we don't see, there I will I will use electronic generated music, and these are the two languages that are that I used within this uh, series and the feature film. Is that something, uh, Bruno and uh, Nenita, you can um, relate to? That directors often have their own idea of what it has to sound like? Yeah, no, absolutely. Uh, I mean, uh, we're always serving the director's vision. And, and also with, with wildlife, <coughs> it's, it's life. It's the natural world. So we've, for the last 60, 70 years on, on television, we have been experiencing the same stories you know, I mean, it's, you know, life, birth, hunger, starvation, uh, predatorial, you know, predators, um, and, and, and birth, and, and so on, and procreation. So it's, it's the same history and, and cycle of, of wildlife. So um, how can we tell the same story in a different way? And that's the challenge. And so I it's interesting your experience at the moment, Dirk, because I've been going through exactly the same thing myself. In fact, I was rewriting a cue at two o'clock this morning to make it more Bambi and fluffy like. <laughs> so, so, um, so, yeah, it, 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 anthropomorphizing, you know, putting these human characteristics and emotions on on animals and how we experience um, what they're going through. You know, it's, it's a finding a way for us to connect emotionally with what's happening in the real world, isn't it? Yeah. But I think the key word for me was su su surprise, the surprise. Um, and um, what I also discovered... Um, is that each animal, each creature, even the Homo sapiens, from the moment we see the light, we know what to do. Mm. We, it, it, of course, it's programmed, it is uh, in our DNA, but it's amazing how, how animals, a fish, uh, uh, what, what we just saw, from the moment you take the <coughs> oxygen into your lungs, I, I, animals, including humans, we know what to do. I think this is fantastic. Let's surprise the audience with uh, a clip from you, Dick, 
uh, from uh, actually it's a scene from of of of, uh, of birth. So is it the birth of the reptile? Yes. Yeah. So it's uh, yeah it's it's one of my favorite uh, uh, clips. Uh, it starts with a, so we see an egg with a reptile inside. So the reptile doesn't know yet where it is and what why it's here. Uh, we feel the heartbeat and then the rest will be there. Yeah. Would you call this Walt Disney-like, or is it quite the opposite? No, it's something organic. It's based on two chords uh, repeating itself uh, all the time. And the orchestration is growing. There are more rhythmical elements uh, coming, coming in, so it's very simple. Uh. Bruno, you were telling that uh, you uh, write certain pieces for certain uh, members of the orchestra, and then you record them separately. Maybe you can um, explain a bit how you do it? It depends on the project. Sometimes I, I record with Dick, uh, very often uh, the orchestra. Uh, but sometimes I love, I like, uh, j'aime beaucoup enregistrer strat par strat. Par exemple, uh, des jouets, un quatuor à cordes, un clavecin, et après l'orchestre. J'aime parce que ça me permet de, de créer plusieurs univers qui se mélangent dans la même musique. Ce serait impossible d'enregistrer tous ces éléments séparément, euh, euh, enfin, euh, ensemble avec l'orchestre. Euh, J'aime beaucoup l'expérimentation. Le, pour moi, le, le cinéma, ce n'est pas seulement pour le musicien le, euh, une façon d'illustrer de, des images, c'est aussi d'expérimenter. And to search the, the secret part of the film. So uh, Bruno tries to experiment with the cinematical um, genre by um, writing for every member of the orchestra and then he records it separately and then combines it afterwards just to look how it works. But we have a clip of it, so maybe yes. we, we, we should we just show it. Yeah, great. This is a clip from a Genesis. Um, it seems like a long but interesting process to, to write. After that, we have the whole orchestra. Uh, you cut the, the but uh, uh, ça, ça continue avec l'orchestre qui, qui, qui augmente le, le, la masse uh, instrumentale. So uh, we cut the clip just uh, a bit too early <laughs> because yes, at I the think end, so. <laughs> <laughs> the orchestra uh, comes together at the end yeah. of the clip. But we, we can see the progress of how you uh, write this music or how, yes. how you record this music. I love to mix some, uh, 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 mélanger des, des éléments qui ne sont pas forcément des instruments de musique comme des jouets ou des, des choses complètement hétéroclites uh, que je mélange uh, à l'orchestre. So he tries to mix all these elements together uh, and play with it. Um, Question, Bruno. Um, so you're recording all these elements, and then uh, it like stems almost. And then, do you rework it and edit it to the picture, or do you give it to the director, and then he um, they play with it and edit the film around the music? No, no. J'écris la musique vraiment sur le montage. Tout est vraiment très très précis. Et euh, j'essaie au contraire de... Il n'y a pas de, de retravail après de montage sur la musique. Tout est déjà prévu dans l'écriture. So he writes some music um, on based on the, the actual uh, cutting of the film. OK, OK. And after they don't touch it anymore. Which yeah. <laughs> <laughs> is very rare, yeah. It's very rare, yes. D do you I'm very lucky. <laughs> <laughs> But I kill the, the director who... Où, euh, je, je tue les, les, les réalisateurs qui demandent le contraire. <rire> et comme je ne suis pas doué pour Bambi, j'arrive à être assez autonome. He kills every director that tries to do the opposite. <laughs> but I, I, I just want to say something here, not as a composer, but as a conductor. I had uh, the, I know Bruno since 30, more than 30 years, and uh, I've conducted a, a lot of his, uh, his scores, and each Each score he writes, it's a, it's a, it's a different universe. It's, it's. I'm always amazed, but 
this man must be, well, we know he's extremely talented, but I mean, for every image, even for romantic films, he always comes with something unexpected. I said, where does it come from? So I still don't have the answer. It's a challenge, probably. No, well, but you I always. Think, I think the film is, is the masters. And uh, sometimes, uh, some, de temps en temps, il faut trahir le metteur en scène, parce que le film exige autre chose que ce que désire le metteur en scène. No, but I'm always very surprised that you always come with a with a different language, like like we saw here. It's um, it's really out of the box uh, what what you do. Really appreciate. It. But I think the main question is: Do you write um, when you write for a music uh, for a, a nature documentary? Do you write a different kind of music than for for instance you write for fiction? Um, I, I think yeah, definitely. Um, it's a kind of a hybrid between. <coughs> Um, scripted with actors, uh, fiction and non-fiction, because it's heightened. You're having to work. There's a lot more responsibility on the music to help push and drive the story forward. So the the emotions are very heightened, um, and you're giving characters to the animals and to the story of the scene. Yeah. Yeah, yeah and you don't have to fight against uh, dialogues. And, oh, yeah, uh, and I that, still that, do. Uh, well, some, it depends. Yeah, it yeah. depends. <laughs> Sometimes, yes. But uh, but I, I think you have more more freedom. Uh, mm, yes and not. Um, I, I think it's a very good school for the the students. Uh, for example, I was teach. Uh, uh, I teach music in the French Conservatory in Paris, and uh, I push my students to to make uh, to write music for documentaries because it's very interesting to try to uh, to find some. Uh, de, de trop en fait de, de quitter le, le, le réalisme pour uh, yes to, uh, it's uh, interesting to to search an aspect and um, uh, yes to, to uh, de s'éloigner du réalisme pour trouver quelque chose de fictionnel en fait et la musique peut tout à fait faire ça so you try to teach your students to escape from reality Yes, to, to, I think it, uh, it's in, in very interesting to bring some uh, fictional aspect to the music and to the film, uh, far from the realist uh, of, of, of the film, yes. But I think it's interesting that you try to push young people to compose for documentaries because we live in an age where documentaries are very common. They are uh, widely produced, so there's a lot of, lot of work there. Yes, but mais beaucoup de, de, de jeunes pensent que la, la, la fiction, les films traditionnels sont plus intéressants que le documentaire. Et il y a beaucoup plus d'argent à gagner. So young people uh, still think that uh, writing music for other kinds of films is more interesting and is uh, better paid. Is it true? Did? Yeah, I, I don't know. I think young young people uh, have to fight to get jobs, and I think they accept what's coming on their plate. Uh, the first, I mean, if it's a documentary, yes, and if it's a feature film, yes. The next clip uh, we have prepared is uh, uh, from uh, our nature. It's uh, the spider clip. Yeah, the spider. This was this is a spider that lives in Belgium, probably also in other countries. And it also it only uh, appears once. So it's living under the ground. And it comes only once to the surface every three years. So you can imagine how difficult it was to not only to film it, but then, of course, the most important thing, they live for a very, very short period of time. They have to procreate, so they have to find, have to find a female. First of all, the, the males are fighting for females, like in real life. And, um, and, um, And then once the, the procreation is done, then the female is eating the male. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah, you know you know that. And and everything is happening under in the skin of the of of the planet, so and under the ground. So I still don't know how they were able to, to film it. But for me, when when I saw it, so first it starts with a battle and then the whole procedure of the procreation, for me it was a religious moment I, when I was looking at it. This is the footage I got in, in advantage. It was a religious moment and I tried to create something religious. So actually we're going to see um, a clip that's uh, not only violent but also very sexual. Uh, let's have a look. <laughs> mm. 
are certainly not in Disneyland anymore. Uh, no, <laughs> definitely not. Uh, and don't be inspired by my story, right? Yeah. <laughs> It's, I think it's an interesting example of how uh, music and bruitage sound effects can go hand in hand, even in uh, nature documentaries. Yeah, I think I think this was also something I, I discovered. Is that the sound effects, uh, it's amazing. There's are little little cracks, and and this is a very important information for the composer. What, what's what will the bruitage be be like? So, but uh, th there again. Uh, first there was the image, then the music, and then at the very, very end they put the, all the sounds of the of the animals uh, on it. So I had no no impact on 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 that. Uh, yeah. But they did it with a lot of respect for your music because. Oh yes, yeah, 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 absolutely, absolutely. And and uh, for once, uh, the composer was invited to be at at, at those uh, sessions uh, and asking for uh, advice and things like that. Now they were very, very respectful. Is that something you can relate to? That, um, uh, sorry, uh, directors um, honor your music and decide to have the sound effects on the low end? Um, well, funnily enough, I'm working on a series at the moment for Apple TV, and the whole series is about sound in the natural world. So it's a composer's dream in many respects. Um, and it's called Earth Sounds. And um, just the other day, I, what they're doing is they're giving me the sound of the animals and the calls, and then we're making this very conscious decision to incorporate the sound effects into the music, where I'm manipulating the sound, chopping it up. So I've, I've got the calls of a male penguin in the Antarctic, uh, we, and, and there's a very romantic scene between the reunion. If you imagine Happy Feet, but it's real, uh, and and uh, and it's a beautiful romantic scene, but they've given me this screechy, squawky sound of a male penguin, and it's horrible. There's nothing romantic about it. So um, so I've tried the best I can. But what I've done in that instance, that I've taken orchestral instruments, I've taken you know certain um, clarinets, bass clarinets, and, and woodwind, and I've tweaked the sound to make mimic the sound of the real penguin call. Um, and and incorporate that into the piece of music, but you know, taking things. Um, I think that we decide beforehand what is going to lead. Is it going to be this music, or is it going to be the sound effects? And that's uh, that. Bec and just like you would in a in a uh, an action movie, you know, sometimes you know you've got you'd all you all you want to do is underpin the scene with bass drones or textures mm -hmm. with long sustained chords, so that you've got all the sound effects of the explosions and the spaceships going on on top, as opposed to giving 150 music stems and tracks with a big bombastic score, and then you have the sound designers work on top, which is fighting. Uh, yeah. You just can't, you can't do that. So you have to have these discussions beforehand to stop, to waste, to not waste the composer's time and, and be efficient in the way, Absolutely. you know, the music and sound all has its place in the, the entire sonic landscape of the film and it's working in harmony with the sound designer is really important. Yeah. I think it's interesting to hear that um, actual real life that nature can inspire you as a composer. It reminds me of Ennio Morricone who used coyotes as a, as a sound effect yeah. in one of his soundtracks. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's like an orchestra of animals in a way because they're giving me uh, whale song, you know, dolphin squeaks, uh, animal calls, spiders, you know, crackling and, and using the sound of the environment as well. So using the wind and the rain and the, and the heat in the deserts and uh, all these kinds of atmospheres and, and build it into the music so that it's like one entire immersive sonic experience, which is quite a fascinating way to work. Yeah. But you know, we have a clip um, from, um, and I have to look, uh, La Clé des Champs. Is there something you would like to say before we see the clip? Peut-être montrer comment une musique peut évoluer en cours de la séquence, au cours de la séquence. Et que l'orchestration, pour moi, euh, est... Le, la narration ne m'intéresse pas tellement, les histoires ne m'intéressent pas, ni dans la vie, ni au cinéma. Euh, ce qui m'intéresse, c'est la lumière de, du film, euh, tout ce qui pas, le non-dit, tout ce qui n'est pas exprimé. 
Et je trouve qu'il y a une corrélation entre les tonalités. Euh, bon, là, ça peut être la mineure euh, pour le... Euh, les tonalités et la lumière des films, les couleurs des films. Pour moi, c'est impossible de, de mettre euh, une tonalité spéciale euh, sur une, une, euh, une lumière euh, qui appelle pour moi une autre tonalité. Il y a une correspondance euh, qui est très euh, subjective, mais entre l'écriture orchestrale, instrumentale, et la lumière, les couleurs euh, du, du film. So you have, to, when we see the next clip, you have to um, be aware of the of the music that it evolves during the scene, um, and that the narration of the clip isn't that important for uh, for Bruno. It's more like the colors, the light. Um, maybe we should just watch it. Okay. I'm happy that you use the word color because uh, colors are uh, some kind of metaphor that's often used by composers when they describe their music. Is it something that you all do from time to time? Speak about music in terms of colors? Uh, I think so. I think so. E each instrument has has a color, no? I think, uh, yeah, uh, yeah. I believe so. Uh, it's very subjective, but but uh, maybe now you will ask uh, which color is a violin or which color is a. It's, we, and is it the same for? And is it the same for all of you? Yeah, but I think uh, we don't think in terms of blue or 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 green. Uh, but but music, of course, it, it, we have millions of different uh, colors. I I don't know how to explain how. How, how we think in colors, but but from the moment you put, even if you if you have one instrument and and this instrument is playing one note, we by just asking, for example, a cello, by just asking uh, in which position of the bow he's playing or which position on the string or ponticello or sul tasto, you just by playing one note you can create already ten different uh, colors, you know. And we're only talking about one instrument. So if you put two instruments or four instruments together, a string quartet, or 80 acoustic instruments together, we have millions of uh, possibilities. Uh, we call it colors, yeah. Um, yeah, well, it's all linked to connected and interconnected with synesthesia, isn't it? Uh, I know some composers who have synesthesia, and so when they hear, for instance, if you hear the sound of the cello, you see the color purple. Um, or, or and li linked to to smell as well, so it's yeah. it's all connected. In fact, I'm I'm working on an installation at the moment. Um, uh, a, a, it's called um, it's based on color and light, and so I've got the or the orchestra laid out like an amphitheatre, and attached to each um, pillar of light is a different in musical instrument, and that triggers different colors. So we're we're connecting uh, different colors uh, of light to different areas of the orchestra. So you know, there's there's a strong connection there. Yeah. So Bruno, when you got this clip, when you saw it for the first time, did you imme immediately uh, thought about well, it's 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 a dark scene. It's in it's uh, at night, but it's also like it's very colorful. It's like a nightmare. Uh, I think so. Um. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, uh, ma façon de travailler sur une séquence comme ça, c'est de la regarder très souvent, mais après de m'éloigner de l'image. J'écris loin de l'image, je fais une première orchestration, et après je reviens à l'image. Parce que quand on est trop euh, le nez, le, les yeux rivés à l'image, on a tendance à, à illustrer ce qu'on voit. Alors que quand on, on écrit loin de l'image, C'est la mémoire, une mémoire peut-être très subjective, de la scène qui reste et qui donne d'autres pistes et qui révèle peut-être des parts secrètes du, du film. So when he writes music, um, he rewatches the same clip over and over again, and then he just puts the clip aside, and then he starts writing, and then when he thinks this music is ready, he tries it on the images again. In order to avoid to translate what you see. Yeah. Yeah. Because, uh, I'm very old, so when I start to uh, write mu film music, uh, uh, on n'avait pas de, de vidéo. On était obligé d'aller à la salle de montage, uh, de relever à, à telle seconde, il uh, y avait un changement de plan. Et j'ai gardé cette habitude qui est très bonne 
de, de, de composer avec la mémoire de, de, du film. So he said he's very old. I didn't see it. Bruno said it himself. And when he started as a film composer, um, there were no videos, so he had to go to the editor to see the clip again and, and to make notes and, and write down um, which section, how, how long does it take. So it's, uh, it's different today. Yes, uh, I remember the recording of Microcosmos. Uh, je, je travaillais donc avec ce, ce procédé-là et on avait un orchestre, l'Orchestre de l'Opéra de Paris. Et j'étais très inquiet de savoir si mes, mes calculs euh, euh, étaient très précis ou pas. Et, et j'ai respiré à la fin de la... De, <laughs> il y avait un dieu des insectes avec moi. So when he did Microcosmos uh, with the um, orchestra in Paris, he had to write down every section and, and it, it's like mathematics, actually, uh, how he had to compose it. Um, the, the next clip we have from you uh, is very colorful as well. It's about um, the ice birds. Yeah, ice birds. Um, uh, yeah, yeah. Is um, they try to to uh, get the attention of a of a of a female. Um, it's always the same story. And in order to do that, he ha first of all he has to catch a fish, and then show that he's very strong. Then he's killing the fish in a very um, specific way, then he offers the fish to uh, the female, and then he's waiting if uh, she likes the fish or not. And uh, if she likes the fish, that's a, a sign that they can um, procreate, yeah. And, and um, uh, yeah, let's first watch. And yeah, let's not spoil it. Let's yeah. just, <laughs> just yeah. watch. Did you think of colors or did you think of romance? I will tell you a secret that everybody should know. All the music was um, recorded. The budget was gone. <laughs> yeah, And then they decided to add this little sequence into the film. So first of all, I was panicking. I said, oh my god, what's going, what's going to happen? Because uh, we don't have time to go again in the studio to record, etc., etc. So then I was looking at the music that I already um, composed um, for this series, but nothing, nothing really matched with um, with what we what we have seen. So then I went to my back catalogue of classical works I had composed. As you know, I have quite a lot of quite a lot of uh, that kind of things, and. Um, yeah, we used music that already existed. I had no other choice. But the advantage was I selected, uh, they, showed, they, they, they told me about what they wanted, so I selected some, 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 some cues. But then they edited the, the clip to the music. And this is why I think it's working very well. But um, so this particular cue, and there was another cue in the film, there are two cues. Um, that were born that way. So, the, as I said before, the process was locked, no orchestra anymore, uh, no time anymore. I had time, but I mean, they, had, they didn't have the time. So, we, um, yeah, we were looking for a solution, and at the end, I think it's working very well. The gaps that you, that you heard in the, in the mixing is because uh, of the voiceover. There is a voiceover. This is my, my question for you. When we were uh, watching one of your the previous clip, was there also a voiceover, or is only image and music? Est-ce qu'il y avait une, une, une voix ou euh, un, un narrateur à un certain moment ou euh, Non, pas dans ces films-là. Ah, très, très, film très, très peu. Très ah, peu. très peu. Ah, yeah, yeah. Okay, ça va. So uh, the, the clip we saw from Bruno, there, there was um, a voiceover, but only yeah. for a short amount of time. Yeah, here, here there's a lot of talking. Uh, it, that's why the music all go down and up and down and up. Uh, yeah. So actually we saw something special today because we saw it without the narration. Without the narration. I think all documentaries should be without narration. No. <laughs> Maybe with subtitles. No, I'm, I'm serious. Just subtitles. Uh, uh, I, I prefer to, to, to have image, music and subtitles. Oui, parce que je trouve que le commentaire précise trop les choses. Euh, moi, je trouve merveilleux de découvrir la nature euh, comme un enfant qui la première fois se promène en forêt. 
il a sa propre interprétation de ce qu'il voit, et on ne lui explique pas ce qu'il a à voir. Et je pense que d'ailleurs la musique de film devrait être comme ça, ne pas prendre le, le spectateur par la main, mais lui laisser lui ouvrir un monde imaginaire. So we don't have to take the, the audience by the hands. It would be more interesting to see a documentary without a voice and to, to watch it like a child uh, walking through a forest for the first time. Yes, and no. <laughs> yes, of course, and no, of course. Because for you know, the story about the spider, if you know that it's only once in the three years that you can spot the spider, it it makes it even more uh, adventurous. You say, oh my God, this is, this is very unique. What we so. It depends. Uh, it depends. But 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 uh, I think uh, a lot of uh, documentaries about nature are uh, too pedagogical. I think it's too much uh, what we called when we were young school television. <laughs> but but you, you, you mentioned something uh, something uh, interesting. Something. Of course, everything you say Dick, is uh, interesting. But um, since you said that there was no budget uh, left to uh, write more music and to record more music, um, do you feel, you, you three, as composers, that music is often, um, it's all, always at the end of the, of the line. It's, when, we, when we see the credits of a movie, it's at the end. Um, you, you get involved most of the times at the end, so. <laughs> Sometimes, uh, uh, de temps en temps, quand on n'a pas le temps, on n'a aucune pression, parce que si on a dix jours pour écrire une musique, si la musique n'est pas très bonne, on dit il n'a pas eu le temps, et si elle n'est pas mauvaise, on dit ce type est génial, en dix jours il a écrit une musique de film. Donc moi j'aime beaucoup arriver au dernier moment sur les, sur les films. So Bruno actually enjoys it to, uh, to be at the end of the, of the line, to, to have a short amount of time to make the music Sometimes. 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 <laughs> It was Bernstein, Leonard Bernstein, who said the best friend of a composer is a deadline. Yeah, that's what he said. No, but, but, but Morricone uh, is known for the fact that in many, many cases he, he wrote the music in advance. There was a short, can, can I tell a short story yeah, of course. about the collaboration of uh, Morricone and Roland Joffe, uh, where they were working together on the, on the, film, on the film The Mission. And Roland absolutely wanted to have uh, 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 Morricone as a composer, so they, they met. I make a very long story short. So they met, they talked about uh, the film, and, and Morricone said, "Yeah, I, I don't want you to read the script. Tell me everything. Tell me which film you have in your in your mind, in your brain." So Roland, through the translator, was talking about the film, etc., etc. And we are going to shoot in in, in a year from now, but uh, I, I would like to ask you to, to make some empty space in your agenda to write your music for me. And a month or so later, uh, the agent of Morricone uh, called Joffe and said, hey, can you come to Rome? Because the music for the mission is ready. And he said, this is a joke. This must be, must be a joke. So Roland went to uh, 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 the apartment of, uh, of uh, Morricone and the music uh, <laughs> The music was ready, and there was a, another small, a small, small story. Then uh, Morricone wrote that beautiful theme, uh, Gabriel's uh, hobo, with hobo and strings and, and harpsichord. But this was not in the script. There was no place where Roland could use that beautiful piece of music um, uh, 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 written for hobo and strings. And this is why, at the end of the film, uh, we recall the film. At the end of the film, the mission, we see Jeremy Irons on a boat. His villages are burning, are on fire, and all of a sudden he takes a hobo, he has, he has some food and a, a hobo in his boat, and he starts playing that wonderful uh, theme. So Roland created that uh, specific uh, 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 space in the film in order to use that, that beautiful uh, music. But I prefer it also to, to, uh, uh, to be at the end of the chain, uh, yeah, which was not the case in this collaboration. When you think of it, it's rather ridiculous that he had a hobo. Uh, well, if you see if you see the nature of the film, uh, it, it's it's uh, ir irrelevant. To, uh, I mean, you would not expect that someone uh, who is on a mission and and who sees that his entire work is being destroyed in in a couple of hours by by huge fires that that he, he has a hobo in his in his backpack. Uh, but in in film, a lot is possible. Yeah. <laughs> No, we, we, we didn't forget you. We have a clip ready uh, with the main title of um, um, uh, Untamed Romania. Is there something you would like to say before we see it? Um, well, this, this is a really interesting... Uh, the brief that I got uh, 
Okay, let me back step. So um, for the last, I think, 10, 15 years, there has been a trend in scoring where directors are... Of, um, they slightly live in fear of melody, and I'm a real sucker for melody. I love tunes. Um, you know, it's my way of... You know, if you talk about film, music, history, and, and, and Morricone, you know, when you talk to... You'd interview the man or woman in the street, and they say, can you sing a theme tune or, or a, a melody from a film? And they go... Ah, I don't know, I don't know, James Bond, you know, John Barry, Ennio Morricone. Um, and, and I think melody is really, really important. But there has been a trend because um, in terms of over-leading, manipulating the audience emotionally, there's been a trend to move away from melody, which is a real shame. And, and there, is a, there, you know, there, there is space for it. So when I got this job uh, for uh, Project Untamed Romania, they said, we want a melodic score uh, that sort of slightly traditional, I wouldn't say old fashioned, but traditional way of scoring natural history. And I thought, yes, you know, this is this. I took all the melodies I'd saved up in the last 10 years and I threw them into this film. Um, so it, uh, there was temp music on the film and um, I came on to the film uh, while they were still editing but um, in in Europe with the subject of the film Romania um, it covers the widest range of topography and, and landscape and wildlife in the whole of Europe it's like Romania is the the last um, sort of remote wilderness of, of wildlife and so um, so I had to give the animals the, it's loosely about a year in the life of a family of bears uh, amongst all the other uh, animals in the film and they all have different characters and personalities but also a big character in the film uh, were the mountains um, I mean, we have the Danube, you've got the salt marshes, and you have uh, have the beautiful mountains there. So this is the opening uh, scene, and uh, so, well, let's just watch it and uh, see. Just say it. Come and see the concert tonight. <laughs> <laughs> no, it, it, this this cue is on the on the concert tonight. Oh, wow! Uh, tomorrow. It's a, tomorrow, 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 tomorrow evening. Yeah, beautiful, beautiful. Well, I heard the narrator say um, we see that uh, the seasons change. That's often something they do in nature documentaries. We go from spring till spring. Um, is it something that you that can inspire you as well for the music? Yeah, I mean, so it's a year in the life of a family of bears um, in, in this landscape. And um, so that the mountains were a character. Um, and so I really wanted to uh, give um, credit to the woodwinds because woodwinds tend not to be very fashionable in film scoring. And I love woodwinds, so I, I wanted to bring out, you know, this, the undulating feel of the, of the mountains and how all these string runs have the, the, uh, uh, the brass, but also the woodwinds as well. Um, and and there, it's a thematic score in that there's a theme for the bears, and you hear the bears when they're the baby cubs and they're playful, and then they become giant monsters and they're predating on, on other animals. And it's interesting what you're saying about there is no winner or loser. You know, there, you know, I've been writing a scene for two lines ripping the th the, the head of a giraffe. And you think, well, okay, it's very sad for the giraffes, but, you know, the lions are winning, aren't they? <laughs> so they're, they're very happy. So, so we had to be very careful about whose perspective to show in the, uh, from the perspective of the animals. Is it first person or third person? Are we observers or are we the animals and we're with the animals? And who, who's the hero? So that's always interesting to score. And it's, it's like scoring a drama. It's the same thing, you know, are we inside the character's mind or are we observers and being led, uh, you know, leading the story? Uh, and in a case like that, what, 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 uh, what was your preference? Uh, well, well, and, yeah. well, and on this one, it was like we are observers, you know, when we're experiencing um, what's happening on screen. But on Predators, the other clip we're showing, it's a different experience. Um, so, and, and so this was a very orchestral score. Um, and there's voiceover, and we're talking about voiceover. I kept the voiceover on because... Um, I always have the voice on, the dialogue on when I'm writing. Uh, for me, dialogue is king. 
uh, it's like writing a song. I have, you know, it's like the lead vocals in a song. Um, and yes, of course, it's great to uh, just have music and images. But I think there has to be a certain balance there with, uh, it's not, this is not a science or educational documentary, but it, it's, um, we have to empathize and understand a little bit of, of, the science of what's happening, but also try and engage the audience in a way that you're taking them on an emotional experience and you want them to feel something and connect. Um, and that's what the function of music in wildlife is, you know, for me to make the audience feel something and have empathy, for, especially in the changing times of climate change and what's happening with the world. Um, it's it's heartbreaking to see what's happening, you know, with only 120... 120 snow leopards out there and so um and and you know the extinction of animals and wildlife and so wildlife filmmaking is this inc beautiful incredible re record of what's happening in, to the changing landscape so for me personally i feel very conservation is important to me and i feel it's a huge privilege and honor to to write music and kind of treat it like um, an archival record of what's happening to the world and to capture the beauty of of the world in a way we've never seen it before. I mean, the, the orb spiders just were fantastic. I wrote a tango for that scene that, that I know that you did but um, a couple of years ago. But um, yeah, it's, it's a huge privilege to sort of just rec record this and for prosperity so that we can show our great 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 grandchildren if they're still here to see this is what the world used to look like and uh, how it was yeah. before we go to the final clip i have a, uh, a question for dick because um the series you you wrote the music for the also nature our nature uh, used to be uh, conceived as a, a project uh, thematically each episode had another team but it was certainly not from season till season and then suddenly there was a movie and the movie is from spring to spring, did you have to uh, rewrite the music for the film to no, make it match with the seasons? No, again, I mean, um, so this, this this series has been produced by the our national uh, television. So for one time, the Flemish uh, collaborated with uh, with uh, our French brothers, it was RTL, uh, together with uh, with VRT, and it was co-produced by Hotel Hungaria, who's a, a, a great uh, and big uh, uh, production uh, company. So the init initial idea was just to have seven series of uh, 50, 50 minutes, and then when they um, uh, shot, saw, saw the vision during the vision of the episodes, everybody was very enthusiastic you say yeah we should make a film uh, but then again everything was was recorded uh, everything was recorded so and I had a very nice budget to, to record with um, with the Brussels Philharmonic uh, which is a great orchestra by the way which we all can hear um, the day after tomorrow yeah so many concerts so it's on, on Saturday Saturday concerts well, well, it's tomorrow who knows music and I need that music but um, um, yeah I mean I mean uh, I, I had no yeah there was no, no way to, to rewrite and uh, of course they took some sequences from the from the series but they did some also some new editing uh, especially for the film so yeah we, we, we tried to, 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 to make the best out of it um, yeah so, so we, we edited the music Music. This, this is something, something I did from, from the beginning, beginning so, so and um, it's completely, completely different from what, what Bruno was saying. When he received the clips, he writes the, the, the music to the, to the image. For me, it was impossible. So all the themes, uh, most of the themes and most of the, 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 the cues I wrote, it was it was a cues with where you could very easily go in and out. Yeah, which which yeah which. Um, it's sometimes very interesting uh, for an editor, but for a composer, not, not always interesting uh, because you have to write in short, short bits. But that was the only option uh, I had uh, in order to avoid uh, that someone would really um, uh, uh, kill my music and just uh, put the scissors in a place where, where uh, it's not possible. Uh, yeah. I think, I think it's, it's time, time for the final clip, and I'm very proud that we have it because it's, I think it's a world premiere. 
Yes, yes, it is. I, I just wanted to say, talk about, I forgot to talk, but just mention a little bit about the process of Untamed Romania, which is very different from Predators. So uh, we recorded it with the, um, the BBC National Orchestra of Wales, and uh, and we, it was like a concert work, actually. It was quite unusual. Uh, because we were quite restricted with the budget, um, I had the temp uh, music, which we then threw out, replaced with a cohesive thematic score. I did all the mock-ups in Logic Pro for any composers out there in the audience. Um, and then, um, so all the music was approved, written to picture, uh, through picture lock, so that was a wonderful, I mean, I love writing to picture. Um, you know, not Disney, Mickey Mousing, but, you know, certain points, you know, and so on. Um, and then when it was approved, orchestrated, recorded with the National Orchestra of Wales, in one day we did 55 minutes of music, and then I had another string session where I recorded some extra string, uh, string cues. Um, overdubs, yeah. So there's one cue. I think I had 126 strings on it. It was just massive. Um, and then uh, and mixed. Not many stems. Um, so there was no messing around afterwards. And that was a joy to work on, which is very different from other projects. You know, where I'm having to provide stems all the time. Um, and there's a lot of creativity um, and experimentation that still goes on in the final mix of the film with stems, as you know. So these days, that is totally unavo uh, unavoidable. I have to do that. So this clip, um, this is from a new series called Predators, and it'll show on in the UK, it'll be on Sky. Outside of the UK, it'll be on Netflix. Um, and it's a five-part series called Predators. The brief was, you are banned from using the orchestra. So that was, uh, so that was, uh, Netflix were really, and Sky were very, very keen on trying to tell stories musically in a different way. And that's the kind of the, the new trend. Yes, the orchestra is still there for other, um, other projects. I mean, if you look at um, Hans Zimmer and Bleeding Fingers and, you know, all the frozen planets and the planet Earths, that's still there. But there is a big shift away from going down that route now. Um, we started off with the wonderful George Fenton on Blue Planet, um, and now uh, George Fenton's style of scoring and the amazing um, sort of style of approach that he brought, he's now, they're moving away from that, and, and then Hans took over uh, and, and brought a certain Hollywood aesthetic to scoring natural history. And now, even now, people are move, wanting to move away from that and go down a more experimental, contemporary route. So that's interesting. To, they want to try, especially broadcasters like Disney and Netflix uh, and Apple, they're trying to engage uh, younger demographic, uh, younger audiences, um, and and music is one of the ways that you can do that. So for Predators, I've been using um, uh, electronics and synthesizers, and, and that has its challenges because we're trying to, um, when you want cute, cuddly, warm moments with animals, if you're using electronics, it can alienate you and make you quite detached from um, warmth and empathy. So we've broken one of our rules and said, we can use some strings here and there. You know, so, so that's interesting. So let's, it's, this is just the opening uh, minute. And the voiceover is uh, by Tom Hardy. Uh, so we've just, just put that on last week. Um, this is the opening titles. And, and since it's a premiere, no videotaping. This is exclusive yes, only for um, you. Netflix gave permission. They said, please, no on live streaming of this clip or recording or anything. might be a silly question, but is it cheaper to produce a score like this with only electronics? Um, yeah, actually, it is a little bit. Yeah, it is a bit. I, we don't have to. But then where the cost comes in is having to do 
uh, endless versions and uh, experimentation and and working with synths, of course. But there's no there's no live uh, elements in this. But it's still a high end premium uh, project for for the for Netflix. Yeah, um, and yeah, it's been an interesting journey working on this. And um, um, okay, what else can I say about it? Um, the voiceover is has been challenging because I was writing. We have guide voiceover from the from the directors, and their voices are a lo little softer than yeah. Tom Hardy's. And so what happened is that the music was all approved, and the music was a lot harder and harder hitting. Um, working with the guide voiceover, and then when Tom recorded his voiceover a couple of weeks ago. Um, that changed the perspective um, and the exec producers went, the music is too hard, uh, mm. again, because Tom's voice is quite hard. And so I've had to rescore, uh, rewrite um, a lot of the music and soften it um, so that it works and shape it so that it works with Tom's voiceover. So you know what we were saying before about t the voiceover and the music has to work hand in hand with um, with the experience i think we can go on like this for hours but we don't have that much time um but we might take some questions from the audience so there is a, a mobile mic <coughs> just raise your hand if you have a question <coughs> Hello, um, thank you for uh, this wide range of uh, different ways approaching music and um, documentaries. And I have a question uh, returning to this uh, synesthesia um, and especially for Bruno. What stuck me is that the rhythm is always so important in what you deliver and uh, perhaps also for um, Dirk and, uh, and Nainita, how uh, you think about rhythm, because there is the rhythm of what is um, uh, delivered by the image, but there is also the rhythm of the, the audience. And I have the impression that the music is very important to um, uh, define the rhythm of the, of the audience, how to look and, uh, well, <laughs> I just have the question about rhythm, and it remembers me also Joubert, who was talking in uh, '36, um, the composer Joubert, uh, about synesthesia and rhythm, which for him was very, very important. Uh, rhythm is incredibly important. I mean, when I'm composing, I'm setting the tempo for the scene, um, and. Um, and also when the scene is presented with some sort of kind of scratch track, some sort of temp reference track, the editor and the director will be creating um, the setting the foundation for the rhythm of the scene. Um, so I've just been scoring um, a scene with two bears, two polar bears fighting. And um, the rhythm is incredibly important. Um, I've ha they want it to be big and epic and heavy, but but have space and 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 show weight for the size of the animals as well. So the size of the animal can influence um, the rhythm, can't it, uh, of of the scene? Oh, vas-y. Ah non. Le rythme, c'est une chose très importante. C'est une très bonne question. Euh, parfois, je, je pense qu'on peut contredire le rythme de l'image et par exemple, sur des mouvements très rapides, créer une musique très lente, élégiaque, et ça remet en scène la séquence. Le rythme est fondamental. Parfois, il ne faut pas épouser le rythme de l'image. Ce n'est pas parce que l'image va vite que le, la musique doit aller vite. Du coup, là, on peut amener même une chose un peu sacrée avec la musique sur des moments rapides et une musique extrêmement lente. Et inversement, sur des mouvements longs, avoir une musique rapide. Pour la synesthésie, euh, moi j'ai un peu ça. C'est-à-dire que les tonalités ont une couleur pour moi. Euh, quand j'entends ré mineur, 
ça, ça a une couleur, ou par exemple, sur du orange, je ne pourrais pas mettre du sol majeur. Mais c'est très subjectif, enfin, c'est très personnel. So, uh, when it comes to rhythm, uh, Bruno tries not um, to follow what you see on the screen. So, it's not because uh, there's a, a certain movement or, or uh, animals um, crossing by on a certain speed that it has to be uh, fast music. It can be slow music. Yeah, I, I fully agree with this. Um, um, and I think it also influences uh, the way we look at the picture. I think if you have a scene where a lot of things are happening, like a fight, and you r use a, 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 a rhythm in a very, very high tempo, I, I believe you see less than whether you have uh, a contrapuntal approach with the with the with the, with the rhythm, and vice versa. <coughs> vice versa. If you see a, a, a slow sequence, and you put music within a high tempo, the perception is um, that it's goes slower, that it goes fa fa faster. So, um, and then sometimes, uh, uh, f from my experience, you have a, a tempo when you when you look at a film and the sequence, you have to score, you have a tempo in mind, and and you, you, you w through the demo, you, you look at it and you say, oh, it's right, it's absolutely right, then you go to the orchestra and you have a different perception about 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 rhythm and rhythm uh, and now i'm talking as a as a as a, as a conductor who is conducting a lot of the music by my colleagues uh, every day the concept of the rhythm is different um, for example for example um, uh, 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 of, of course in previous times composers they only wrote give you a very vague uh, uh, indication like andante moderato or allegro but allegro which means fast 200 years meant something completely different than 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 today but even the concept of tempo 100 now those two composers they give very clear indications about the tempo of course because it's film music it should match with the film but still a, a hundred today can be uh, different tomorrow or in an hour in an hour from now in in the in the perception so it's, ver it's very uh, subjective i believe um uh, walter merch the uh, editor the legendary editor uh, wrote this um, book about editing and um, in it he talks about the perception of time uh, and, and rhythm and um, basically if you watch a scene without music um, it can drag on and be very slow and then as soon as you put music onto it your whole perception of time changes Absolutely. because it goes by psychologically it goes by much faster <coughs> than and so that's why one of the reasons why uh, directors put temporary music onto the film to help them um, it because it affects their perception of, of yeah. time in the in Yes, the but I think temp music is very dangerous for the composer. I think the temp music is the enemy of a composer because uh, he doesn't discover a film without music and uh, it's impossible to experiment and, and to try to find a special music for the film. When he received and he watched the, the, the film with the temp music, uh, le, le compositeur a une bonne oreille, il a tendance à être marqué par ce qu'il entend et il refait un peu ce qu'il a. Je trouve que c'est très très dangereux, c'est une très très mauvaise habitude. Moi je ne les écoute jamais. So he, he never listens to the temp music and he thinks uh, you should trust, actually you should, you should trust a composer that he has a great ear, ear for um, writing this music. I think we have But time for a one... A lot of composers survive only by the grace of the temp track. That might be stuff for that. Yeah. <laughs> That's for another panel talk, Dirk. Um, maybe we have time for one final question. Thank you all for this talk. It's been great. Um, I was curious to hear what your uh, thoughts are on using silence, uh, especially in nature documentaries. I mean, we saw very good examples of the sounds of nature being very rhythmical or melodic sometimes. and you can use the music to highlight them, but also there is definitely a chance to just not put anything there and just let them speak for themselves. So I'm curious to hear how uh, you approach the decision of putting music versus just letting the footage speak for themselves. 
Uh, well, I mean, I, I have a background in sound design. Uh, that's how I started off. And so to me, <coughs> silence is music as well. Um, you know, when you're mapping out, uh, when you're spotting a film or uh, when you're watching a film with a director, I think it's important to know where you don't have music is as important as where you do have music. Um, so that's, it. yeah. Yeah, and, and also, again, the concept of, 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 of silence. Sometimes it's like half a second uh, before the next cue st starts or, or, or a second. Uh. I think it's the main problem for the composer uh, where uh, he has to begin to start the music and when he has to finish it. Uh, and it's why the... Uh, sound design, to know the, the sound design is very precious for the composer because it's really, for me, interesting when the music, uh, when the music naît du sound design and revient au son uh, très naturellement. I don't know how to say it. Can we take one final question? Because I saw one hand over here. And then we'll just have, we'll be five minutes late. Sorry for the. <laughs> people of the World Soundtrack Awards. Hi. Uh, first of all, thanks for showing these clips. It was really, really nice. Um, I actually had a question for Nadida, Nadida because um, the, we were talking about, or you were talking about uh, color in the musical instruments. And I was wondering if, um, because uh, yeah, production companies now move towards electronic music, if there are other challenges in finding the right color or, yeah. Oh, in terms of palettes of sounds. Yeah. 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 Well, I mean, as it's it's like an ama a fantastic sandbox, isn't it? Um, so thinking outside of the orchestra. I mean, a lot of scores these days are hybrid scores. So we're bringing in. Um, it's an interesting discussion I have all the time. Actually, um, having one at the moment where what. Uh, if, if you've got the orchestra on the one side and you've got pure electronics on the other, uh, what what level does the does the meter swing between? Um, and that's a question that I ask my um, directors all the time. Um, and also how experimental can we go with the palette of sounds and different colors and textures? So it's just a case of what's what ultimately I have to serve the film. And what does the film need? You know, it's very if it's very experimental and condemn like Predators uh, and Dirk picked up on it um, that it's edited in a uh, the style of filming, the style of editing is very different. It's much more snappy and fast, and so we're trying to so the music has to match and mirror the um, images. I'm not talking about matching in terms of if it's fast cut, we have fast music or slow, slow music, but it's got to mirror the aesthetic of the overall conceptual approach. Um, so so that's, uh, so it's a very exciting time to be a composer, I think, because we have so much at our fingertips that uh, when composing, it's important, I think, to reduce the possibilities and create barriers for ourselves otherwise we would never i mean i i w the music that i was writing 20 years ago is possibly more creative than the music i'm writing now because i can do anything now when i started out all i had was a small computer with three sound modules and very very limited resources and low budgets and so that forced me to be more creative uh, as opposed to now, where a composer can achieve so much. Well, I'm afraid that's all we have time for. Um, thank you so much. I, I want to thank my, my guests for being here. I want to thank the wonderful team of the World Soundtrack Awards for having us. And also you, the audience, thank you so much for being here, for joining us for this session. And please enjoy the rest of the festival.